So you want to install Linux. Maybe Windows became really annoying, or you need to revive an archaic computer. Whatever the case, here's how you do it. I'm going to be installing Linux Mint, as it's lightweight and beginner-friendly and should run on almost any computer, but this method should work for most Linux distributions. The first step is to download the operating system file. Go to the downloads page, link in the description, and pick the version of Mint you want to install. There are three here, and I will be going with Cinnamon. Click download, and now pick the mirror closest to your location. Essentially, the closer the mirror, the faster your operating system will update. You'll also want to download the SHA256SUM.txt file. Now we need to check that we have the actual operating system file and not malware. In the command prompt, run this command, replacing the path to my ISO file with the path to your file. Take this large string of letters and numbers, called the SHA256SUM, and copy it into a text difference finder. Then open the file you downloaded earlier, and grab the SHA256SUM from behind the version of Linux that you downloaded. Mine is this one because I downloaded Cinnamon, and now check it against the SHA256SUM that you got from your ISO file. If the two sums match, like mine do, excellent, brilliant, awesome. You can continue to the next step. However, if they don't, please take your hard drive and shred it into a million little pieces. The malware may already have permeated your system. Just joking. If they don't match, delete the ISO file, run a malware scan, and download a different mirror. Next, you're going to need a USB stick of a reasonable size, 8 gigabytes or more should work, and a little tool called Ventoy for burning the ISO into the drive. Download link also in the description. Now, you could use another tool called Rufus to burn the ISO onto the stick, but I prefer Ventoy simply because it allows nutters like me to store multiple ISOs on one stick. This is useful because it might take a few operating systems to find one that you like. Once you're here, you need to download it. The version doesn't really matter, just make sure you have the one that ends in your operating system, such as Linux if you're using a Linux computer, and Windows if you're using a Windows computer. Now we need to check the SHA256SUM for the Ventoy file. Do the exact same thing we did earlier with the ISO file, the same command, just with Ventoy's file path, go back to the Ventoy page and copy the sum behind the version you downloaded, then paste it, along with the terminal result, into a text difference finder. Once again, if they match, you have the correct file. Now extract the zip file, find the file labeled ventoy2disk.exe, and run it. Now grab your USB drive, making sure there's no data on it that you want, and plug it into your PC. Then select it in the drop-down menu labeled device. Click install, then yes, then yes, and boom, Ventoy is installed. Now copy your ISO file to the USB stick with Ventoy installed on it. You'll want the one that's labeled just Ventoy and not VTOY EFI. As you can see, mine is already on there. And just like that, we have a bootable drive ready to install Linux with. Insert the USB stick into your computer and turn it on. If the drive you're installing Linux on is blank, it should boot straight to Ventoy. Otherwise, you'll have to set the USB stick as the first boot in BIOS, like I'm doing now. This usually means pressing F2, F12, or delete, depending on your motherboard. Now select the ISO file you want to boot. You'll only have one, the Linux Mint ISO, but I have several because I have no life outside messing with operating systems. Now double click on the install Linux Mint icon and wait for the installation window to pop up. Select your language, keyboard layout, and check the box to install multimedia codecs. My drive has Windows 11 on it, but I'm going to be erasing it completely. If yours has another operating system on it, make sure all your data is backed up before you do this, because after this, it's gone. Now all that's left is to select your time zone, set up your account, and boom! Linux is now installing. Two hours later. And there you are, Linux Mint is installed. There's not a whole lot of setup that needs to be done for this operating system, unlike Windows, where oftentimes you need to delete all sorts of unnecessary apps and bloatware. But one thing that I do like to do is change the wallpaper, as Linux Mint has quite a nice selection. Hmm, uber modern metallic thingamabob. Colorful waves thingamabob. And... Wow, that's making me feel angry already. Okay, bye. Enjoy your new operating system. It's so red. Goodless.